Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We are the Millers. I'm Steven. And I'm Amanda. And uh, if you're new with us, welcome. We're actually pretty new too. We've only been doing this yeah. about two and a half months. So if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, comment down below, introduce yourself. We actually really like reading the comments. It's yeah. really fun it's just awesome. getting to know you guys a little bit. And uh, and today is actually a pretty exciting video. Yeah. Uh, we've been waiting to do this for just a little bit. A lot of people have asked for this, um, but we're going to be showing a video uh, of our son's gotcha day. We adopted Jude and Liam mm -hmm. seven years ago from Ethan. Ethiopia. Yeah. And uh, and today we're going to show you guys a little bit of that story. You may have heard us talk a little bit about this before in our family story video. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, it's probably a good idea to go back and watch that. Uh, but this video specifically today is going to be about Jude and Liam's Gotcha Day. Yeah, so it's been seven years since we brought them home. And we obviously were not YouTubers seven years ago. Um, but was YouTube a thing seven years ago? I don't know if YouTube was a... It's been yeah. around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like barely, I think. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> So we're excited to share this with you guys, but it's not a video that we actually made ourselves. Um, the church that we were a part of at the time actually made this video for us, and we love it. We love watching it every year. Our boys love to look back on all of those sweet memories and just really meaningful, touching moments that we had with them, getting to meet them, getting to know them, and bringing them home. And so um, we're gonna share that with you guys. It has a little bit of a different feel just because it is from seven years ago and it's not one that we made, but uh, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And so. Yeah, yeah, but before we jump into that, we want to kind of talk a little bit about I mean, it's been seven years now, you know, so yeah. um, a lot's happened in seven years and we mm -hmm. want to share a little bit about what it was like bringing them home, what mm -hmm. it was like after they came home, yeah. just some fun stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Our boys have always been just full of life, full of energy, happy, sweet little boys. We get comments all the time talking about how yeah. sweet our boys are, and it is very true. They are sweet, sweet little boys. And um, you'll see in the video, I mean, just so happy, just full of joy. And that is one of the things that we noticed just right from the beginning. And um, so we have so many funny and um, sweet memories just from them, things that they were saying to us um, as they learned English. They had really cute little phrases that they would say that we still sometimes will, like, it will come up in normal conversation <laughs> because it's just parts of our, you know, daily life now. It's like, really funny. Dad, what's doing you? Yeah, the boys... What are you doing? They would say, what's doing you? Yeah, because, <laughs> see, the boys, they learned English pretty quickly because they actually... Um, they didn't really have a real language when we brought them home because they had been bounced around from several different orphanages in different regions of Ethiopia. And so they had like bits and pieces of different dialects. Yeah. Um, so when we brought them home, they learned English very, very quickly. Um, and I mean, I think it was like within three months, they were speaking pretty much anything that they needed to. They could communicate. Um, in English, but sometimes the sentence structure was mixed up a little bit and yeah. it made for a lot of really cute moments and certain things that we still say to this day. Um, yeah, like what Jude was saying, uh, he'd come into the room and just say, what's doing you? And uh, <laughs> There was one you? night, I remember uh, we were trying to teach them to say uh, mouse. Oh yeah, And because the S's, they had yeah, a hard time with S's. And so they would say mouth and we could hear through the door Liam just going, mouse. Like after we put them to bed. Mouse. Yeah, they were supposed to be sleeping. Yeah. But it was just so cute. We were like, oh my gosh, he's like, he's like, took it very seriously. Learning to say mouse, you know? Yeah. Super cute. So funny. <laughs> and Chick fil A, that was like their favorite place to go. We introduced them to it yeah. very quickly. And they loved chicken, but they would always call it kitchen. And they'd say, I want kitchen. I want <laughs> yeah, kitchen. Yeah. That yeah. was really cute. Everything was so, like church, they would they didn't know the name for church. So they'd say, oh, oh it's daddy go bring, bring, love you, Jesus. Yeah, and you say, where's daddy? Daddy, bring, bring, I love you, Jesus. And we're like, oh yeah, he's at church, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was just so many cute moments like that. And it was really special because at the time, we just had two little girls. We just had yeah. Reese and Kira. And it was really, um, really awesome to see them a part of the process. They were so excited to have little brothers. They had been asking for little brothers for a yeah. while, actually, before Praying we- Praying for little brothers. They actually <laughs> mentioned it before we had even decided um, we knew we would adopt someday, but we hadn't really decided. And Reese and Kira were both saying, I want you to adopt a little boy, which ended up being a sibling group. And yeah. um, so it was really awesome to have them a part of the process. Yeah, so side note real quickly, when you watch the video, you're gonna notice that 
Reese is called Kenzie in the video, and that's yeah. actually her first name. Yeah. And a couple years ago, she wanted to change it to her middle name, which is Reese. And so don't be thrown off too much by that. So yeah, guys, that's about it for this intro. Um, we're really excited for you to see this video and just to be able to share these really sweet and precious memories mm -hmm. of adopting our boys and bringing them home from Ethiopia seven years ago. Um, so we hope you like this video. If you do, um, subscribe and you can comment down below. Like Steven said, we do love to read all of those comments. Um, they really do mean a lot to us and That's we're going to try to engage a little bit more with those if you have questions or comments um, because life has been a little bit crazy lately with you know brain it's... surgery and and that kind of thing but um, we really love reading those and we're going to try to interact a little bit more on that and so um, thanks for watching guys we hope you love this video This is the story of our journey to accept God's calling in our life to adopt Jude Serafo and Liam Esriel. April 13th, 2011, we touched down in Ethiopia in Addis Ababa Airport for the first time to meet our sons. We started seeing the statistics worldwide of the number of children who don't have families. They're fatherless, they don't have parents, um, they've been abandoned, they've not been wanted. At that point we really felt like um, it was time to take that leap of faith and, and start the process. Um, but we didn't know a whole lot, we didn't have a whole lot of um, clarity, so we just began first by praying about um, which country we wanted to adopt from. As we were making those calls, to adoption agencies, they seem to all be pointing towards Ethiopia. We moved forward with this particular agency, put in our application, got on their newsletter, they would send us an email every month. In the left-hand column, there would be pictures of waiting children. And in that left-hand column, there were two boys, Serafel and Esrael Teresa. I felt strongly in my heart, deep in my heart, that God was saying, these will be your sons someday. And so I emailed, I responded to the newsletter, emailed our agency and said, can we request to adopt these children formally? Within an hour, they had sent over a whole, just everything that they had on them. And we just read all the paperwork and we cried as we just read the, the details of these boys past in their lives and it was just so heartbreaking, but we were falling in love with them already. That very day, we got an email back saying, yeah, you can, you can accept these kids. We were on a fast track to need to raise a lot of money really fast. So we sold coffee and t-shirts and I made a, a CD of songs that were kind of inspired by our adoption. Kinsey, particularly our oldest daughter, she, she would tell all of her friends at school about her adoption and she decided she wanted to bake cookies and she would go around the neighborhood and we would tell the neighbors. She just wanted to help out in so many ways. It was, it was really exciting to see them getting involved and like really wanting to be a part of the process. It was incredible. The city was not at all what we pictured it to be. The orphan home was not at all what we pictured it to be, but the second we saw our sons, um, just did something in our hearts and they knew us. We'd been sending pictures all along and just trying to get to know them and let them get to know us as much as we could. With Ethiopian adoptions, you have to take two trips to Addis Ababa. And the first trip is for the court um, approval there. You actually have to see your child, but then you actually leave and wait for your, your chance at the embassy. And so we had to go to the orphan home, the care center, that last day. 
and hug them. Jude, my older son, he's just kind of crying. He knows that we're having to leave. So we got back in the States and it was a little, it was really, really hard for us because we, we really felt like we'd left half of our family, half of a world away. Ready to go to get our sons from Ethiopia. So we flew back to Ethiopia in July to bring our sons home. And we had to stay for five days, which we really enjoyed experiencing the country with our boys. And we would talk about, you know, going on the airplane. They would say, yay, aeroplane, yay. So I knew they were excited about going on the airplane, but um, I'm sure it didn't hit them that they were actually leaving Ethiopia. So we finally made it back to the States. Kira and Kenzie jump out of the car and they're like, where are they, where are they? And Jude and Liam, they, they seem to kind of understand like, okay, this is my family. And they put their arms up and they gave them a hug. You could tell that there was just instantly like kind of this bond that happened. Um, it's definitely the grace of God that they, from the beginning knew like, okay, this is my family and I love them. <laughs> So we've come a long way in three months. Um, at this point, they really kind of seem like just happy, healthy kids. They just have an excitement for everything that we do. You know, we say, hey boys, we're gonna go in the car. Yay, car! Okay boys, we're gonna play outside now. Yay, outside! You know, they just, they're really happy little boys, which is such a blessing. Bringing home the boys, and just seeing their little faces each day, waking up and, and seeing them is a constant reminder, um, really, of God's calling in our life um, to love people. It's not just about Ethiopia or, or even Africa. It's really about listening to conviction that the Lord's put on our hearts and, and if He's calling you to adopt. It's about raising children in His name and His grace. It's about the heart.